Live from the Councilor Studios in Nassau, Bahamas, this is Bahamas at Sunrise. And now your hosts, Ramal Ferreira and Anastasia Palacios. Good morning, Bahamas. Welcome to Bahamas at Sunrise. I'm Romy Ferreira. And I'm Anastasia Palacios. A very happy Friday to all of you. Hey, and it's great weather there. Nice and cool from the rain. Last night it was mm -hmm. kind of storming. Yeah, it was storming <laughs> last night. But I'm sure that the earth rejoiced with the goodness of that <laughs> rain. And I know I'm rejoicing this morning because of that nice cool in the air. Uh, and in spite of all of that, we made it here on time to Bahamas at Sunrise. Just for you, it's going to be an exciting show as usual always is and you know it's friday so we want to get things up and pumping for you as you get ready for a wonderful weekend i'm trying to figure out if it's fantastic friday or freaky friday or freaky fantastic friday it could be all of those things and much more the day is whatever you make it there you go it's the power of intention but coming up this morning on bahamas at sunrise you've heard a lot about health insurance in the news recently we have an insurance executive in studio and we're talking about different types of insurance this morning and that's going to be exciting. We also know that it's less than seven months until the road to Rio. And that is a primary focus of the Bahamas Olympic Committee. The president joins us this morning to tell us how they are preparing for what is sure to be an exciting event. Oh, I'm really looking forward to that. And of course, you'll be entertained in the first half of the show. We have a young Bahamian pianist. Exciting stuff. You want to stay tuned. But before we get to any of that, we're going to give you a look at weather with your first look at headline weather with none other than... Godfrey Burnside. Weather at Sunrise, brought to you by Bahamas First, first in insurance, today, tomorrow. Thank you, Romain. Good morning, Bahamas. In your first look at weather at sunrise, we do have a weak front boundary across the northwest Bahamas, just to the north of New Providence. That should push through another hour or so. Some of the clouds are still moving through. Had some showers last night across the island. Some heavy ones were possible, but one or two more morning uh, showers. And then sister moves into the central Bahamas, clearing the skies with some cooler temperatures and some breezy conditions over the next 48 hours. In your satellite loop, you can actually see that band of clouds across the northwest Bahamas moving towards the southeast. In the weather day, we're looking at variable cloudiness, a bit breezy, with a few showers, mainly along that frontal boundary, high temperature reaching 76 degrees Fahrenheit. Tonight, a few patchy clouds around on the cool side, low temperature going down to 63 degrees Fahrenheit. And some region highs and lows across the Caribbean, Barbados, 83 and 75, in Jamaica, 86 and 74, in Trinidad, 85 and 73, and the Turks and Caicos Islands, 83 and 73. Across North America, Atlanta, 54 and 32, in Raleigh, 1528. In Miami, 69 and 53. Dallas, Texas, 72 and 46. And Toronto, Canada, 25 and 20. In your marine forecast, high pressure builds behind that with some fresh breezes. And so today, those winds northwest to north at 15 20 knots, seas 4 to 6 feet over northwest and central Bahamas. Southwest to west at 10 to 15 knots, sea 2 to 4 feet over the southeastern islands. On Saturday, those winds become northeasterly at 15 20 knots, seas 4 to 6 feet or the northwest and central Bahamas, 15 knots, sea through to 5 feet, or the southeastern islands. And on Sunday, that warming trend starts east to southeast at 10 to 15 knots, sea through to 4 feet, or northwest Bahamas, northeast to east at 15 knots, sea through to 5 feet, or the central and southeastern islands. Here are tides. You can expect a high tide at 12 minutes past 11 this morning. Next low tide will be at 5.34 this evening. High gain to 9.11.44. Sunset will be at 5.52 this evening. Rises to moment 6.54. UV and X6, your water temperature is 76 degrees Fahrenheit, and the moon phase now moving towards the last quarter. And if I'd have looked, cool out till Sunday, then that warming trend, and some clouds building up again on Monday. So for the most part, the temperature of the weekend will be in the mid-70s at daytime, and the lower 60s at nighttime, with a warming trend on Sunday, where those temperature goes back now into the upper 70s, the low 80s at daytime, and the mid-60s at nighttime. That puts a wrap on your weather sunrise, I'm Godfrey Burnside. Back to you, Star. 
Thanks, Godfrey. National health insurance has dominated the conversation lately among Bahamians. It really is the type of insurance they have been focusing on the most. But we do know following those storms back in 2015, that it's not the only type of insurance that matters. Here to talk to us today about some other types of insurance that are very important to the industry and about the industry itself that has contributed so much to our economy, I'm very happy to welcome executive from Shield Insurance, Mr. Howard Knowles. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to Bahamas at Sunrise. It's good to be here. So I want to jump right into the conversation and I want you to explain to me what is the purpose of insurance and why is it important for individuals and families to begin to think about purchasing their own insurance outside of this national health insurance conversation? Right. Well, I mean, first of all, the, the purpose of insurance is to put you back in the position that you were in before you had a loss. Mm -hmm. And when I say a loss, I mean, for example, let's say as it relates to car insurance, um, if you have comprehensive motor insurance and you were to write off your car, mm -hmm. um, were it not for insurance, a lot of people may not be able to be able to replace their car. And so it puts you back in the position um, that you were enjoyed before the loss occurred. Okay, so let's talk about that then. Uh, there are some people who often say that they have, have insurance. They put in a claim and then they do not get the full amount for an insurance owed. So for example, homeowner's insurance, and I wanna delve into that some more, but since we're talking mm -hmm. about it, if I insure my home, it's $100,000, storm comes, takes it away, I come back, I get a check for $60,000. What has happened there to the value of that $100,000 versus $60,000? You did say you was going to ask me the difficult questions <laughs> this morning, right? Um, this is, a, this is a, a difficult question before breakfast, but it's an easy <laughs> question to answer. Uh -huh. um, well, what happens there is you have, to make, you, you have an obligation to make sure that you're properly insured. Okay. Um, what, you know, that, that's one that often gets us as insurance um, entities gives us a bad name. Mm -hmm. um, people say, "Well, you know, I was insured for sixty thousand. I had a loss of sixty thousand, but I didn't get sixty thousand." Mm -hmm. um, and what happens is, let's say you were insured for a hundred thousand, mm -hmm. but your house is really worth two hundred thousand. Okay. Um, obviously, you were insured only for fifty percent of the amount that you should be. Okay. Because it would take you two hundred thousand dollars to be able to replace your house. Right. Now obviously the insurance company's on the hook for fifty percent of it. Uh -huh. Somebody else is on the hook for the other fifty percent uh -huh. and that someone is you. Okay. And so if you have a sixty thousand dollar loss, uh -huh. the insurance company would pay contribute its fifty percent, which is contracted under the policy because uh -huh. that's what you paid the premium for. Uh -huh. And then you would have to take care of the balance because you didn't insure properly. Okay, now see, I, we have to, we have to, I need to understand now. So you're saying to me then, at any given point, the insurance only has to pay up to 50% of the claim, or that's no, just- No, 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 if you're properly insured- If you're properly insured, if you, if you were insured the for the full, full If okay. you were insured for the full 200,000, mm -hmm. then if you had a $60,000 claim, the insurance company would have no problem paying you the full amount. Okay. Of course, that's subject to whatever deductibles there are, they may be under the policy. Okay. Most policies have a deductible, for example, a home policy has a 2% deductible mm -hmm. on the sum insured. So that comes off first, and then the insurance company will happily pay you the balance. Okay. Now, in the event that someone feels for some reason they have not had the right relationship with the insurance company following a claim, is there a recourse? Is there someone that they could go to to mediate between them and the insurance company based on what the insurance company has said? Yeah, sure. There's okay. always a recourse. Okay. I mean, like anything in life, if you're not pleased with anything, mm -hmm. um, you, you go to your lawyer and you seek advice. Um, you should make sure that your lawyer is one who's well-versed in insurance law. Um, and if not, uh, you can also go to the insurance commission because insurance companies don't just operate sort of willy-nilly. Okay. I mean, they're regulated. Okay. And so, um, you're, you know, if you, you go to your lawyer or mm -hmm. you go to y the insurance commission mm -hmm. to let them know that there's something that you weren't satisfied with, and they will, they will, they will try and rectify it. Okay. So we've talked, and I mentioned briefly the homeowners, that was just an example. And earlier I talked about health insurance, but what are the other types of insurance policies that people can purchase? Well, I mean, you know, that list is so wide. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could begin with life insurance, for example, mm -hmm. uh, which is outside of the whole um, health insurance conversation. Mm -hmm. um, well, life insurance exists, the same concept that I was saying, that puts you back in the same position mm -hmm. that you were before your loss. Obviously, 
you can't replace the person who died, mm -hmm. um, but you have to look at life insurance as being something that's for the living and okay. not for the dead. Okay. Uh, because it's those who remain behind that that need to be put back in a, a, a better financial position on the same or put back in the same pos financial position that they enjoyed before the loss. And so what you need to do is you need to, the, the breadwinner or mm -hmm. the person who's taking out the life insurance need to look at how they could replace the income that their family yes. would have lost if they were to move off the scene. Right. And um, so, I mean, someone somewhere I read that you look at it as a person as like a money tree. Uh -huh. This is the money tree that's springing up in your house and, uh -huh. and is, 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 is pr pr producing the revenue for you. Uh -huh. If that money tree were to move or someone had to cut it down, uh, where does the money come from? And right. so you need to find the mechanism, the insurance is the mechanism to provide for that continuation of income. Okay. So we have life insurance and you then have life insurance and of course you have that whole arena called general insurance mm -hmm. which is what i mainly do okay and you know we talked about that some already in depth i mm -hmm. mean not in depth but we talked about car insurance right. which is kind of the big one because under the law here you, you have, have to have, to have mm -hmm. car insurance to drive on the road and then of course we're in a hurricane zone mm -hmm. so you can't avoid talking about the topic of home insurance so let's i want to i want to pause right there because apparently there is um homeowner's insurance, and then there's also life insurance, and you have to purchase them both when you buy a home. Why is, it, why is it that you have to get them both when you are about to get a home? You can't just get life insurance. You can't just get home. You need it too. Well, yeah. I mean, most people uh, to buy their home have to go to the bank. Okay. And the bank will insist that if you are getting a mortgage, that you need, have to have the means of protecting the bank's assets. Okay. Because, you know, bear in mind, until you pay off that loan, mm -hmm. that home belongs to the bank. Uh, you may be living in it and paying the mortgage, but until it's free and clear, it's under a, a mortgage agreement with the bank. Okay. And so the bank wants to make sure that if something were to happen to you, that there, or, the, or, the, or its asset, the house, that they, there'd be a means of repaying the mortgage. Okay. And so the life, of course, if you were to, to pass, that's the means of paying back the bank. Mm -hmm. And then um, the house insurance, if there was a fire or a hurricane, um, is to make sure that the you bank can gets again. paid back. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So that makes sense. Yeah. I, I think it's a, a, a conversation that people need to begin to have and that they would understand these different types of insurances and why it's needed. So we want to thank you for joining us this morning. And we want to let you know that only good things will happen to you now that you've been here. And so I'm going to tell people, if you want to reach Mr. Knowles, you can find him at Shield Insurance. That's for right. All of your general insurance needs. That was quick, man. That was quick, eh? We have yeah. so much more to talk about. Yeah. You have to come back again. All right. No problem. <laughs> thank you for joining us. You're watching Bahamas at Sunrise. We'll be right back. Good afternoon. First response, how can I help you? I, I've been in an accident on West Bay Street. Can you send someone to help? Yes, ma'am. A first response team will be there in 15 minutes. Are you hurt? No, I'm fine, but a bit upset. We're glad you're not hurt. Please, try to relax. Our team will take care of everything as soon as they arrive. First Response provides immediate on-site service and support from the scene of an accident through the claims and repair process. And it's free to all Bahamas First Insured drivers in New Providence every day for any type of accident. If you drive and want first response on your side, call 321st or visit BahamasFirst.com for the name of an authorized Bahamas First agent. First response can't prevent an accident from happening. But it can certainly ease your mind when it happens. At Henry F. Store Electric Company, we supply all your electric needs for any size project from residential housing to luxury hotels. We can help you achieve just the right look from doorbells to chandeliers, table lamps to ceiling fans, wire, conduit, panels, dimmers, switches, plugs, and even tools. And don't forget light bulbs. We have those hard to find energy saving fluorescent bulbs and more. Henry F. Store Electric, number 135 Mackey Street. Over 50 years of reliability, service, and low, low prices. We also ship to the family islands.
Welcome back to Bahamas at Sunrise. The Bahamas' success at Olympic Games is measured certainly in the eyes of most Bahamians by our performance in track and field, but we will be represented in all sporting disciplines for the most part. But when you trace back the performances in track and field, it began with Frank Rutherford. He was there in 1992, continued with the Golden Girls. Tonic Williams continued the trend. Silver Knights, Golden Knights, and this morning we have the Grand Knight himself, Roy Colbrook. He's the chief of mission. As we talk about the road to Rio 2016, Roy, welcome. Hi, thank you, Roy. It's, it's a good. pleasure to have you here. Let's talk about it. Where are we in terms of preparation? I mean, it is here. We smell that? Yeah. That's the Olympics. Yep. Well, Romy, you know, um, my work started from last year. Okay. Um, in August, we had the chef meeting uh, where a number of concerns about the Olympics was um, raised at that time. Um, you know, when you go down for those kind of meetings, what happens is that you do all the prep work, you do all of the inspection of venues and everything else like that. And if there were concerns, for instance, sure. you know, you had contamination in the water system, uh, sure. in the sea and all that stuff. And so um, the chefs itself, are the, they're the main key persons who have to ensure that when uh, their teams arrive, um, everything when it comes from safety, security, food, sure. all conditions, uh, A1. You know, that is a very important point in relation to the Olympics because you don't want your athletes to go over there, get some food poisoning or some waterborne disease from you know, swimming at, at the beach, or security. That, that's, that's very interesting. So in terms of that element of the administration of the Olympic teams, we've got that covered. What about the preparation of the athletes themselves? Well, you know, um, for the most part, we have athletes who are they are they are on their different teams and they're making their qualifiers at these at this time in preparation of making the Olympic team, um, and so you will find that um, the Bahamas Olympic itself, which would be great for us, is that we are encouraging and we are promoting more disciplines because you know last Olympic we took two disciplines, which was some track and field and swimming, and we would like for this Olympic that more disciplines be a part. Sure. And so uh, what that does is that shows the strength and the work that is being put into sports by the NOC, which yeah. is the Bahamas Olympic in this country. I, th I think it's, it's very good because we have young Bahamians interested in all kinds of sports. But you mentioned something that I wanted us to revisit a little bit, and that's the qualification for being in the Olympics. You mentioned people making their qualifying time. So explain to our viewers how the process works in order for one to sort of qualify for the Olympics and then represent the country, of course. Well, in every discipline, you have different qualifiers. Um, and so the qualifiers will, will range from discipline to discipline, uh, even age-wise. age, age -wise. And so you will find that probably, for instance, if you use track and field, um, in the long jump, you have to make a qualifying jump, which um, the Olympic standards already has the qualifiers for you to reach that mark. Because the whole idea about being qualified is that persons who come to the Olympics and who make it to the Olympics, uh, not that the whole idea is for you to medal, but you have to ensure that you perform in a decent manner. And, and of course, at a certain level. Now, we want you to look into your crystal ball, so to speak, and do some forecasting. <laughs> Fortunately for you, nothing to do with the Met Department. It has to do with the amount of teams and, and disciplines you think will be, we'll be sending to the Olympics this time. How, how many sporting disciplines will be represented? Well, we would like to send um, about three or four. Excellent. Um, and so um, that's, like I said earlier, you know, that's what we're pushing towards. And if that happens, I think that'll be a fair in the cap of the Bahamas. Sure. And so just not just the traditional ones, but then we'll be looking for more athletes in different disciplines. I mean, we heard the whole place has been a buzz with track and field, swimming, boxing, maybe even uh, gymnastics, uh, judo. Uh, judo. Cycling. Cycling. Look, that's the six already, so it's looking good. Will we see any meddling at this Olympics? Because, you know, once you get a taste for a medal as a country, there's that expectation. <laughs> that you can almost taste it. It's palpable, and it's in the air. Uh, well, 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 Romy, you know, um, we cannot um, prejudge this time on exactly what will happen when it comes to meddling. Um, but I think it is a great feat alone for just making the Olympics. Sure. I think that's it's a great honor. Yes, it's, it's <laughs> an honor. No doubt about Just that. to represent your country <laughs> is, is the greatest great, thing. Great honor. Yeah. What about funding, though? I, I don't like 
my friends from the Bahamas Olympic Committee to come on here and we don't talk about funding because, <laughs> I mean, we can send good intentions and prayers all we want. It's going to take capital yes. to actually make this happen. Uh, one of the things when it comes to funding, Romy, is that, um, you know, it's always important, for instance, when you talk with the, the IOC, um, last year when they did with the training camps, there were grants that were provided from the LOC uh, for grants. This Olympic, um, Brazil is saying that, you know, they're not providing grants for, for training camps. And so now you find that um, with our partners and with sponsors, um, we have to ensure that these training camps happen and with, with assistance probably with the government and ensure that Team Bahamas has the best possible chance sure. in climatizing and ensuring that the environment in which they're in is only and very conducive for their best performances. How, how are corporate Bahamas and individual Bahamians, how, how can they help with funding or how, how can they be a part? Because it makes you feel like you're a part of the team when you contribute. Yes, well, um, the Bahamas Olympic, we have our plans that are going to be rolled out and okay. it's going to be um, jointly rolled out. And it's called the Road to Rio. Yeah. And it's going to be a joint venture where everyone could participate Excellent. in ensuring that Team Bahamas does its best. Well, you certainly have our support here at Bahamas <laughs> at Sunrise. Why, thank you so much. And thank for being you. Being on Bahamas at Sunrise. I know it takes a lot of effort putting together an Olympic team. I would imagine that's an understatement, but uh, you guys seem to be on top of it. Yes. And yeah. of course, only good things will happen now. This is your fundraising kickoff. It has <laughs> right. to be on Bahamas at Sunrise. You're watching Bahamas at Sunrise. We're having a great time this morning. We're talking to Roy Colebrook from the Bahamas Olympic Committee. We'll be back after this. Since 1967, Focal has been a vital part of the Grand Bahama community, providing high quality products and great customer service. Today, we continue to work hard and remain focused on fueling growth for people throughout the Bahamas. There's no place like Exoma. With our striking, beautiful waters. And loyalist tombs. And even warm our hearts. And there are no people like the people of Exuma. We are the people. We are the people. We are the people of people to people. Exuma. Volunteer as a people to people ambassador today. This portion of Bahamas at Sunrise brought to you by Sun Oil Limited, a Shell licensee. Welcome back to Bahamas at Sunrise. Growing numbers of young Bohemians are finding music as an attractive option, either as a profession or a favorite pastime. In fact, the inclination towards music has transcended all socioeconomic sectors of our society. The wealthy, the middle class, the working class, and the poor have found passion in developing their gifts and talents in the performing arts. And I'm pleased this morning to have in studio a young Bohemian who is doing amazing work in the music industry. He has studied at the Peabody Institute at Johns Hopkins University, and you would have seen his performances online at Carnegie Hall. We welcome this morning Dion Cunningham. Thank you for having me, Anastasia. Listen, Dion, this is exciting stuff for me, just to see a Bahamian who is following their love and their passion and just doing something amazing. And I want to begin by finding out, how did you get involved with music? How did you begin to play the piano? Well, it began with my parents saying, here's a piano and you were going to play this <laughs> instrument. Um, my mom in particular was very, was, was very motivated. She, her, her prayer was always, I want my house to be filled with music. So my brother and I were enrolled in piano lessons um, at an early age. I studied with a great lady, Miss Dawn Sands. Okay. Uh, she's a pianist at Calvary Bible. Uh -huh. And I trained with her from a young age until the time I left high school. She okay. is the one I credit with my musical training in the Bahamas. That's awesome. So now you and I were having a conversation off air and you said to me that you actually went off to university to do medicine. You were hoping to become a doctor. Absolutely. But now you are a pianist. So tell me what happened there and how does one make the determination that I'm not going to go the normal route. I am going to follow the thing that I love. Well, as you said, um, my undergraduate degree was in biology, pre-med. Uh -huh. And I returned to the Bahamas for one year for one reason only, to take a break from college uh -huh. before 
uh, plunging into the medical profession. I took a job teaching at Kingsway Academy for one year. Okay. And they, what they asked me to do was, instead of teaching biology, why don't you teach music? Okay. And that one year turned into many years of teaching, and I had the pleasure of teaching students at Kingsway Academy, C.R. Walker, and other schools within the community. Uh -huh. And I realized that my life could not be without music. And wow. so I thought it was hopeless at that point, and I decided to pursue it. Okay, so you decided to pursue it, and with great results. Can you share with our viewers some of the major accomplishments that you've had in the field? Well, the most recent accomplishment, I've ha I had the great pleasure this year uh, to play, give my debut uh, performance at Carnegie Hall wow. uh, in New York City. And that was a result of me receiving second prize in the American Protégé International Piano Competition wow. in March of this year. I've had so many wonderful experiences. I've gotten the chance to play in Italy, um, in festivals and in concerts. I participated in a chamber music competition in Budapest, Hungary. Oh, wow. I won that mm -hmm. and I got to, to, to play um, in a winner's recital there. I've done uh, performances as a collaborative pianist at the Kennedy Center. Wow. Uh, also with the Baltimore Symphony. I've, I've done conducting there in their um, uh, their, one of their opening concerts wow. during the season uh, and of course performances within the Maryland and on the East Coast. I, I've had a wonderful time these last five years in my pursuit of, of music. That's amazing and so I hear you talk about it and I can see the passion in you and this is a Bahamian going to Budapest and, and playing in Maryland and leading orchestras in Baltimore, a Bahamian and I want to emphasize that because I think a lot of times people don't have hope in their dreams. How do we encourage young people in music? How do we say you have a talent here and you can be even more than you thought that you could be by using your talent? How do we do that? I think the first thing is, is to recognize that it's there. Um, you have to know that music isn't something that I like to do, but it's something that I can't live without. That's okay. what it was for me, um, as, uh, especially when I returned from my undergraduate years. As well, um, we need to provide this sort of experiences for our students, for them to understand that music is Junkanoo, uh -huh. music is Calypso, music is Soka, all of the styles that we are so um, accustomed to in this uh -huh. country, but it is so much larger. Okay. One of the great experiences I had was to take students from Kingsway Academy uh -huh. to on fine arts trips to New York City. Uh -huh. And to this day, those students return to me and say, wow, you expand our expanded our view to what music is. So you've been able to expose young people and you have an upcoming event that young people can attend, right? Could you uh, just tell us a bit more about that and then we will get over to that piano piece that you have for us. So there are two events that uh -huh. I have coming up. There is a piano recital that I'm doing on Sunday um, and that's uh, in aid of my educational experiences. As uh -huh. we know, uh, continuing studies is expensive and I'm pursuing my PhD. I okay. hope to complete it in a year and a half. Uh -huh. And that's going to be on Sunday uh, Janu January 31st at 5.30 at St. Paul's Hall, Life at Key. Okay. Um, I encourage everybody in the community to be there. You will get a chance to see what you missed in Carnegie Hall. Uh -huh. To get to your direct question, the outreach event is a as a, as a brainchild of mine, it's called Adventures in Western Art Music. And it is a way to bring the piano recital into the classroom to teach not just concepts of music, but concept of, concepts of history, concepts, concepts of geography. BGCSE students will be able to um, sharpen up knowledge that they will be using in their exams. Mm -hmm. uh, primary school students will see stunning visuals in terms of what I'm playing awesome. and video. Um, and so how do, yeah. they, how do people register for that? So that event is on Monday and Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Matinee uh, uh, presentation is 10.30 and 1 p.m. at Christ Community Church. Okay. I've sent it out to schools to offer it as a field trip, but parents... Um, and bring them on in. And bring, <laughs> take your children out of school for one hour. It's a one-hour event, uh -huh. and bring them down. It will be it'll be a wonderful experience. I'm playing film music, music even in video games. Oh, wow, that's it, so cool! It's going to be amazing. So I want people to see exactly what it is that you've been able to do. And so right now, introduce for us the video that they are about to see. So the piece that you're going to hear is is uh, the piece that I actually began my Carnegie Hall debut with. It is a piece by a composer called Frederick Chopin. Uh, it's the Nocturne in C minor, Opus 48, number one. Uh, nocturne means night music, so it evokes images and the feelings of night time. All right, I hope it doesn't put me to sleep. I'm sure I won't. Because I'll be too enthralled, but here we go.
the government is implementing CCT, the Conditional Cash Transfer Program, which is proving successful in our region. CCT is a new exciting form of social assistance to help Bahamians break free of the poverty cycle with dignity. CCT provides a cash benefit and many more with an emphasis on improving the health and education of our families. CCT has the advantage of transparency, improved targeting, automation, better monitoring, better processing, improved service, improving client dignity. Call the Social Safety Net hotline at 397-8628, the Department of Social Services. Together, we rise. Inspiring you, rise. sustaining you, rise. empowering you to rise. And now, your hosts, Ramald Ferreira and Anastasia Palacios. Welcome back to Bahamas at Sunrise. Fantastic show thus far. Second half will be better. It will be. And listen, the show has been so amazing. Want to send out congratulations to that amazing pianist, Mr. Yeah. Cunningham, for all his work. And remind you that you can reach him at 361-872 if you are interested in hearing more information about that. It's going to be $8 on Monday and Tuesday for students at Grace Community and $25 if you want to attend his recital this Sunday. And you can buy tickets at Logos out east or from Custom Computers in the west. We have got another set of exciting entertainment lined up for you and so you want to stay tuned for that we're going to begin with toastmasters club 1600 they are in the house we know that toastmasters is a wonderful self-development organization but they are here to tell you about a special event especially for the ladies yeah yeah you ready i am ready i was just <laughs> looking for some other comment but i'm going to say that you know i'm going to hold off on that one until the, oh, because, when we close we so I, I no, no comment <laughs> Those are words that will save any politician. <laughs> but guess what? It is carnival time again. Believe it or not, carnival is a part of the national entertainment calendar. And we're going to find out from a major group. So you want to stay tuned for that. And of course, we know that as we end January, we are getting closer to February. And that means the month of love. Love. Valentine's Day is not <laughs> far away. And there is a love campaign underway to support the Cancer Society and help cancer victims. We're going to explain all of that to you right after your weekend calendar. Good morning, Sunrisers. This is your boy Sovereign with the weekend calendar. Pure Silk Bahamas LPGA Classic. Friday, January 29th to Sunday, January 31st. Ocean Club Golf Course, Paradise Island. A day of family fun and exciting track and field competition. The 13th Annual Club Monica Athletics 2016 Track and Field Classic. Saturday, January 30th, Thomas A. Robinson Stadium, 9 a.m. Under the patronage of the Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, the Right Honorable Perry Christie and Mrs. Bernadette Christie, the Bahamas Brass Band presents the Sound of Harmony 6, and all people praise it. Special guest artists, The Cooling Waters, The Orchestra School of Music, and many more. Saturday, January 30th, Grand Lacayan Ballroom, Freeport, Grand Bahama, 7 p.m. Bahamas Masqueraders will unveil their 2016 Carnival costume line at their official 2016 launch, featuring music by The Mighty Pencil, DJ Bravo, Epic For Reels, and DJ May. Saturday, January 30th, Jack around the house, Parliament Street, 8 p.m. until. Under the patronage of the Governor General Dame Marguerite Pinling and the Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, the Right Honorable Perry Christie and Mrs. Bernadette Christie, the Bahamas Red Cross Society presents the 44th Red Cross Ball. Under the theme, Passion, Pride, Pizzazz. Saturday, January 30th, Malia Nassau Beach Resort, Independence Ballroom, cocktails at 7 p.m., dinner at 8 p.m. Dress is black tie. Dion Cunningham, Piano Recital. Sunday, January 31st, St. Paul the Apostle Church, Life at Key, 5.30 p.m. Jonathan Farting and Grace Generation Live Recording, Grace to the Nations. Sunday, January 31st, Transformation Ministries International, The New Gardens, 7 p.m. That's your weekend calendar. To have your event posted on the calendar, please don't hesitate to email us at calendar at bombsunrise.com. Well, Toastmasters Club 1600 is certainly legendary, and, and you cannot understate the legendary, and it's taken personal development, self-confidence, just awareness to a, a whole new level, and we're so pleased 
to welcome in our studio this morning the president of the legendary Toastmasters Club <laughs> 1600, Carlos Palacios, along with the Education Vice President, Chavez Brown. To both of you, welcome. Thank you. Thank you Obama's at Sunrise. Pleasure to be here. Now, let's talk a little bit about uh, Toastmasters. It, it's been around for a while, mm -hmm. and it has certainly its own objectives. And I would like for you to explain in a succinct manner what those objectives are. Thank you very much, Romy. I'll do my best. Toastmasters is essentially is a leadership and a public speaking and a, it's a basically about growing and expanding your own capability wherever you start out. So it's all about self-development. And Club 1600 was the first club in the Bahamas and we were established in 1969. And that legacy continues on <laughs> today in 2016 and hopefully on in the future. Of course. I mean, I mean it's certainly one of, when you look at some of the people who have passed yes. through Club 1600, it's certainly distinguished uh, members of our community. You're in your presidency. Yes. Uh, How has it been going? How? I would say it's been going well. We've had a number of big programs. We've been able to travel to Exuma and visit with clubs there. We'll be going to Freeport. Of course, we go to conferences in Fort Lauderdale, and we've actually been able to, we have a number of goals and guidelines to, to meet, and we are actually the club to reach our highest level of distinction so far in wow. our whole division. So we continue to try to raise the bar, <laughs> and of course, it's great members and great supporters that allow us to do it. Sure. It sounds like a lot of momentum is going on there, but you have a ladies' yes. night yes. coming up, and yes. I, you know, I find that kind of unique considering the unique status of Club 1600. So let's talk a little bit about the ladies' night and how it came about. Yes, the ladies' night uh, speech competition is something that's been going on for several years in our okay. club. Uh, we show appreciation uh, annually to the ladies who allow us to be out late every Thursday night, as well as those ladies who help to make their house a home and who develop in society. So one night out of the year, we give back to the ladies. And this theme on the ladies' night, we're going under the theme of scandal. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all right, so uh, what can we expect <laughs> well, at, at uh, ladies' night? Uh, just like the, the TV series Scandal, it has a lot of plot twists, surprises, okay. and surprises. So that night, we're going to follow the same thing, surprises, prizes and giveaways from one of our lead sponsors which is a uh, bamboo shark so it's going to be a very entertaining exciting night for all of the ladies bamboo shark yeah so a bamboo shark and a blue mystic i want to check it so yeah, when's yeah. all this going to happen this happens on february 11th okay and uh, so it's at super club's breezes where ah, okay. our club meets every thursday super at 8 breezes, yes. february 11th you'll have yes. your ladies night and it's of course free for ladies gentlemen it's only five dollars but it's really to to give the ladies a chance we have a lot of giveaways we have so many different tricks and treats and honestly even though the name is a bit provocative what it is is it's just to encourage some creativity and it also encourages persons to come out and be entertained so it's it's nothing as bad as you might think from but it's it's definitely a wonderful opportunity and um, yeah come on it, it, you us. know it's it's great I think it's a it's a catchy theme and it's trendy and it's following Nietzsche yeah. Walker's comedy tragedy I Absolutely. understand it perfectly who should be coming to this event then, Chavez? Uh, the event is open uh, to the public. Okay. Uh, most definitely, we want to invite all of the females and f throughout the greater Bahamas to come out. And even if they want to bring the, you know, their male counterparts with them. So it's, it's going to be very exciting and it's open to all. Mm -hmm. And just for example, last year we had about 400 people there. Wow. So right. if you want to come, we recommend you come early. Come early. <laughs> and very early. So <laughs> last year it was standing room only. So yeah. it's, it's well attended from past experience, and we don't expect anything less this year. So come early. Doors open at 7.30. The event starts at 8. Is there a format to the event, a program? Yeah, so our Vice President of Education could... Can yes, we have, a, we have a, a formal uh, program, you know, we go into the singing of the National Anthem. We have a table topic session where we ask some impromptu questions to the audience to get them involved. And then we have four dynamic speakers to give presentations uh, to the ladies as well as a live auction. All right. Well, that sounds exciting. Just remind our viewers again the date, mm -hmm. February the time 11. and the place and how they can get tickets. Sure. So there's no tickets for ladies. Just come out. Okay. Gents, like I said, it's $5. You can pay at the door. And so it's February 11th, 8 p.m., Super Club's Breezes. Doors open, 7.30. And it's, it's not like a dance, so you're sitting down, <laughs> auditorium-style seating. <laughs> so you come, 
<laughs> relax, <laughs> and you have a good time. That's, right. that's what it is. All right, well, gentlemen, thank you so much for being on Bahamas at Sunrise. I, I noted you've been on Bahamas at Sunrise before, so that, that momentum and kinetic energy towards goodness yes. Yes. has already started. We so. feed from you. So. I'm sure, you I'm sure you it'll be great, but thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you and congratulations on your event. You're watching Bahamas at Sunrise. I want to say a very special good morning to Ed Malord Kerry. That's right. Just you will rejoice to see my day. We'll be back after this. The beauty of Bimini is seen all around. The beauty of Bimini turns people into friends. And friends into family. It's soothing. It's healing. The beauty of Bimini keeps our guests coming back. It's in the faces of our people. It's the people. The people. The, the beauty of Bimini is people to people. Welcome back to Bahamas at Sunrise. Last year, the Cancer Society of the Bahamas embarked on a campaign to raise funds for the expansion of its cancer caring facility. Yesterday, Let's Talk Live, a Guardian radio program, the Quality Home Center, Fred Munnings Jr., and Sunflowers joined forces to launch a campaign to reignite the fundraising drive. We're joined in studio this morning by Fred Munnings Jr. in his capacity as an entertainer. You see him <laughs> in his handsome hat. And Dr. Bloomfield, who is an obstetrician gynecologist. Good morning and welcome to Bahamas at Sunrise. Good morning and thank you. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. So what is this campaign all about, Mr. Mannings? Well, as you said, it's to raise funds mm -hmm. for, for the cancer care unit. And I'm sure Dr. Bloomfield will help us to understand all about the unit when mm -hmm. you talk with him. But we, we're simply trying to sensitize the nation to assist in this very important program. We're mm -hmm. trying to raise three million dollars. Okay. And as we said yesterday, our aim is to raise this three million dollars by the end of May wow. 2016. Wow. Very ambitious. Very. But we can do this. Mm -hmm. um, everyone in this country, in the Bahamas, I guess throughout the world, mm -hmm. would have been impacted some way by this devastating disease we call cancer, mm -hmm. whether directly or indirectly. In my case, very directly. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're simply saying we want every Bahamian, everyone living in this country, everyone even visiting this country mm -hmm. to contribute. And um, Quality Home Center, mm -hmm. wonderful organization um, through Don and Trevor Davis mm -hmm. and their team mm -hmm. have, came, have come up with a program with, with my good friend Carlton Smith okay. um, to ask every person who comes through the store from now until the end of May, mm -hmm. would you like to make a contribution to cancer? And you can tell them yes, mm -hmm. and we want you to say yes. Mm -hmm. Give them the extra change, you know, round it off to the next dollar, or mm -hmm. give them five dollars, or ten dollars, or a hundred dollars, or a thousand dollars, or two thousand, whatever yeah. you wish. Mm -hmm. But the answer is yes, okay. either, you know, home center or Q Club. Mm -hmm. And in my case, um, we have re-released my signature song, which okay. is All the Best Things, uh -huh. which I wrote for my late wife okay. 40 years ago. Wow. And it happens to be the 40th anniversary of the Cancer Society. From wow. I learned this yesterday. Uh -huh. So all of the sales receipts, all of the profits from the sale of the CD during mm -hmm. this period will go to the Cancer Society. Excellent, excellent. So that's how we work together. So Dr. Bloomfield, I want to bring you in on the conversation and we're talking about raising this $3 million for this cancer care unit. Can you share with us why it is important for us to have such a unit in this country? Well, we currently have a 10 bedroom unit mm -hmm. and this uh, provides a residence occupation for people coming from the family islands right. who need cancer treatment. Mm -hmm. Now, it was always difficult for people to come into, the, into NASA for treatment and be able to afford a place to stay. Yes. And back in the early days, they sort of relied on relatives. Mm -hmm. Now, often they, they, they stay maybe as long as six, 
10 weeks. Wow. And of course, after a while, the relatives would probably get completely fed up with you being there. Mm -hmm. It's time to go. Mm -hmm. And so we came up with this idea that we provide a place for these people to stay. And okay. this, this has been provided free of cost. Wow. And as everybody knows that we have a lot of patients in the Bahamas with cancer. Mm -hmm. And the Cancer Society, unlike some of the other associations that only deal with one type of cancer, or maybe two at most, we see everybody with cancer. Wow. We see all age groups. And so it's very, very important now that we've been running out of space. Wow. We hate to turn people back. Mm -hmm. And remember, if you don't have a place to stay, you can't get treatment. Yeah. And so we have, as, as Mr. Munnins has said earlier, mm -hmm. we have embarked on this program to extend this, this center mm -hmm. by an additional 16 rooms. Okay. All right. Four of which will be dedicated to hospice care, okay. which, wow. we, which we doesn't exist, yeah, we which don't doesn't exist in the Bahamas currently mm -hmm. and so this this is our dream and our goal okay. now as mr money said earlier we would like to raise three million dollars now if we raise three million dollars or five million dollars we can you know probably even build a bigger center because mm -hmm. i'm sure the need is there mm -hmm. and so this is the gist of now this is our 40th year okay and the cancer society has a proven track record mm -hmm. we have looked after people not only are we localized in nasa we have 11 branches in the family islands and so we have reached out to just about as wide a part of the bah Bahamas as we can. Okay. And so we look forward to everybody supporting us. Yeah, and I, I We're know a 12 venture. We always say here on Bahamas and Sunrise that good things will happen to you when you come. But I'm really pleading to those listening right now. Absolutely. Because I'm sure Absolutely. that there's someone who can even write us this check. Absolutely. That, you know, I'm just going to speak it and put it out there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and send it to you right now. <laughs> How can we reach either of you or the Cancer Society if somebody wants to make a donation even now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the Cancer Society is located... Um, right next to ZNS. Mm -hmm. And so um, Tommy Sands is the administrator mm -hmm. and you simply need to call the Cancer Society. Or you can drive in. Mm -hmm. We won't re refuse anybody coming in. Okay. Or there you can get in touch with myself mm -hmm. at my office. I don't I hate to say this the number at my office is 356-5552. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm honest enough that I would pass a check on. <laughs> Especially big checks. Yeah. <laughs> or just go to the um, Quality Home, Quality Quality Center. Home Center or mm -hmm. the Q Club. Mm -hmm. Go into the store, buy any item or even just make the donation. Wow. And you will get a receipt mm -hmm. showing that the amount that you would have donated goes directly to cancer mm -hmm. and every week every month however they do their reconciliations mm -hmm. those funds would go every school child for example mm -hmm. can participate in this I mm -hmm. mean if they get with their teachers and mm -hmm. just say listen I want I have a dollar I have a quarter or whatever wow. from their lunch just we asking our young men give up one bear mm -hmm. a week mm -hmm. that's three dollars mm -hmm. and let's make this contribution because if you would have gone through the experience of a loved one having to fight this devastating disease we call cancer, mm -hmm. I am sure that every person in this country mm -hmm. will assist with this program. And particularly because you're talking about family island residents yes. who, come to this, uh, who come to NASA for their treatment and they have no place to live. Yeah. What a wonderful, and if you go to that place, it's a beautiful yeah, I'd love place. to shop there, so I'm sure you guys will get quite a few donations from me. Well, and then I'm even talking about the care okay. unit. Yes. If you go to that unit, mm -hmm. and as um, Dr. Uh, Bloomfield and the cancer people will tell you, you must have a sense of peace yes. and tranquility yes. when you're fighting this disease. Yeah. Stress is the big enemy. Yeah. And, you and know, so he's the medical expert, so he can share yeah. that if you have time. But the point is... We want every Bahamian, every single person to contribute. come to this country mm -hmm. to contribute to this effort. Well, thank you so much for making the effort. And thank you for joining us this morning on Bahamas at Sunrise. We'll be right back. Need a business license? Simply apply and pay online with the user-friendly online tax administration system, OTAS. Fat registrations, payments, information, forms, confirmation of applications or payments, all online. Even the business license will be emailed directly to successful applicants. So why waste time? With OTAS, our doors are always open. Access OTAS, the online tax administration system at fat.revenue.gov.bs or email us at taxinquiries at bahamas.gov.bs or call 242-225-7280. One thing, two things, blue thing, old things, things that are small, things that are grand, things that fit just right in the palm of your hand. Fox Hill Nursery, a large selection of garden supplies. 
If you can see it in your mind, you can find it at Fox Hill Nursery. Welcome back to Bahamas at Sunrise. Of course, we mention it to you and we bring it to you. It's Bahamas Junkadoo Carnival time. We're talking with Benjamin Alexander and Africa Alla, Bahamas masqueraders. To both of you, welcome. Thank you. Bahamas Thank at you Sunrise. So much. I want to find out a little bit more about the masquerade. I remember them, but remind our viewers your you, mantra. You remember them. You, you, well, you. after today, you won't forget them. Bahamas masqueraders, um, we won in all divisions. Um, the 2015 Bahamas Junk and Carnival in all divisions we swept. Wow. Um, additionally, we went to Egypt earlier this year or last year, I should say, in September with Celeste Marshall, and we took we came back with the national best national costume out of 78 countries. Wow. Additionally, so we this went beginner's luck is kind of on a roll. I'm sorry, like wait, well, there's steady. no luck. It's pure talent. <laughs> <laughs> there's no luck. Of it's course, pure talent. We, it went to, um, we went to Miami Carnival okay. and shelled it down with the Wasi one and her crew. Mm -hmm. And now we're getting ready for Bahamas Junk and Carnival 2016. Okay. And we're coming with the theme, the Guana Honey. The Guana Honey. Yes. Wow. What's, what's, what would be Masquerade's take on the Guana Honey? Well... We're, we're going to do something a little different. Last year, you know, we wowed them with the colors and the feathers, and we, we took them to the island paradise. Mm -hmm. This year, we're going native, really native, and we're bringing in a lot of indigenous products. Um, you're going to see a lot of straw, a lot of things that are reminiscent to the Bahamas, uh, shells and so forth. So that's the native tribes of the Guanahani. Mm. I mean, it sounds exciting. So how can people be a part of this? How can you well, build their excitement and their momentum? Well, there's so many different ways, but the first thing that you need to do is visit BahamasMasqueraders.com. That's BahamasMasqueraders.com, and you can, reserve your, you can reserve your costume or your slot. Okay. Now, if you haven't decided which costume you want, you can always reserve a slot inside a section and figure out what it is that you want to purchase sure. thereafter. But it's imperative that you do that. We've already had 100 plus um, reservations so far, okay. and we only opened it up, I think, about two weeks ago. Wow. So, so good yeah. things continue to happen for you. Cool. Now, Godfrey Burnside and I, the, the weatherman and myself, we have this program where we get in shape for Carnival. Okay. You know, when, when we go play mass, we go and bear back. So can we sort of reserve our costumes and then if we have some changes oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. can we can well, we make the, the adjustment the costume, because the costumes, are all, the costumes are one size fit all all adjustable okay so you don't have to worry about ah, sizes. just, nah, get, just jump in the line <laughs> and i'm speaking about jumping the line um on friday on saturday uh, saturday what is this month january right Saturday, January 30th, we are hosting our launch, our 2016 launch okay. at the Jacaranda House All on right. Parliament Street. All and right. the, the party starts at 8. Okay. The show, the runway show, and you don't want to miss the runway show. We have a lot of things planned. The runway show starts exactly at 10 p.m. Excellent. Please be there All right. for the magic. I'm going to be there. Could you hand that mic to that good distinguished gentleman next to you, All Mr. Right. Benjamin, Benjamin Alexander? Benjamin Alexander we're, we're, is one of our artists. Yeah. Well, he, he's got the charisma and the swag going on. Benjamin, how'd you become a part of uh, the Masqueraders? Well, last year for my first time, I met up with Roselle Moxie and we did some work and I knew them for like a couple of years now. Yeah. So I had a couple of tracks because I do music from St. Lucia. I'm from St. Lucia. Ah, okay. And I, I work with Versace, with Obi. Okay. So we met up. I went on the truck. That's where I met Africa. Mm. And this year I was like, I need to be a part of this. I need to be, I need to have the song. Okay. You understand? So she was like, get some beats. So I produced the beat. She was like, I love this one. <laughs> then... I had to find the words yeah. and back and forth, back and forth, and then we got something and it was like perfect. Perfect. And masqueraders, that is what we are. All right. So <laughs> that you, is what we are. You, you have a new track out, right? Yes. What's it called? My new track is Le Bam Bam. Le Bam Bam. Le Bam Bam. Mm. Smeddy Bam Bam. L E S Bam Bam. I got you. <laughs> I've been a solution before. I know all the tricks. Oh, e excellent oh, stuff. Oh. Now, when you release this track, when people hear it, they're going to want to buy it. They're going to want to. They're going to want to take it home, and uh, I call it rehearsal for the big carnival yes. parade. How can they get a hold of this uh, music legitimately? 
Um, we gonna have some copies on sale at the Masqueraders event on Saturday. All right. Also on the website. And also on the website. Um, Bahamas Masqueraders. Yes, yeah. Africa. And <laughs> we'll have a few distributed in some stores. I, th I think if you don't give this mic to Africa <laughs> one more time, all of us are going to be in trouble. <laughs> so Africa, just remind our viewers okay. about the event that's coming up. And then well, we're going to hear from Benjamin. He's going to perform for us. Again, it is on Saturday, January 30th at the Jacaranda House. It starts at 8 o'clock and the show starts at 10 p.m. It is BahamasMasqueraders.com. You, you can purchase your tickets at Bahamas Welding and Fire or you can go to the gift shop in the Hilton the, Hilt, right. the British Colonial Hilton, downtown Nassau. Is this going to be a wild and wassy affair? At well, let me tell you, this is a luxurious, elegant, and fun event. Okay. So we're going to kick it over no to... No Bamzi. No, no, no. No, we're going to, we're going to, fet, well, we're going to party all <laughs> night. Right now, we're going to give it over to Benjamin, and he's going to take it away with the Bahamas Masqueraders 2016 theme song. Excellent stuff. Yes. Hey, good morning, Bahamas. Let's go. Hey, it's that time of the year. Junkanu Carnival. Hey, Bahamas. Masqueraders coming down. Tearing up the carnival. Hey, hey. When you see we on the road, it's another episode. And tell them we are masqueraders. Hey. Tell we rushing down the street Tell them we are masqueraders That is what we are 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 Well, thank you so much for, for masquerading. I'm ready, Romy. I don't know about you. Romy and Godfrey owe us from last year. Don't forget, they were supposed to come out and show us those carnival bodies. So we'll see whether or not they'll do it this year. But we'll also see you tomorrow night as we celebrate with masqueraders at Jacaranda House. And do not forget, if you wanted those pianist tickets, the event is actually at Christ Community Church on Monday and Tuesday. And you can call 361-8782. That's 361-8782 for more information about that. Thank you for joining us this morning. Have a great weekend. See you guys on Monday.